We're adding another Cover Killer Nation debut to the Arsenal today with the band Caliban. And these guys are a Germanic metalcore slash hardcore product that are now on album number nine. They've been with Century Media Records for uh, the past couple of albums. And this album here in 2014 uh, is the first time that Caliban will ever be getting a Cover Killer Nation review. Man, oh man, we're doing a lot of these here in January. It really is the month of the debut for Cover Killer Nation, at least. So anyway, let's talk about these guys. The, immediately whenever you see or hear me say the words metalcore and hardcore, I'm sure that there are a lot of you out there that start to twinge, that start to wince a little bit over there uh, on your other side of the computer land, whatever it may be, because you're thinking, oh no, it's one of these bands that Cover Killer Nation is just immediately going to be like, blah about, because it's metalcore, it's... It's hardcore, it's nothing that has all of that much of this progressive, you know, whittly diddly diddly stuff that he likes. I'm giving all these stuff, all these things a chance, don't get me wrong. And plus there's stuff that I really like. I mean, consider the Disarmed to Descent review I did last year for Killswitch Engage. They were definitely a band, and still are a band, that fall under that same persuasion. So, Caliban's Ghost Empires, I really, it's a 13-track uh, affair, which is 12 tracks with a bonus track. It clocks in at over 50 minutes in length whenever you add into the bonus track. The Deluxe Edition is going to have a couple of live tracks on it, uh, which is going to be pretty cool for those people who are huge fans of Caliban. Uh, Caliban is a band that does not necessarily need much of an introduction. They are a group that has certainly stayed true to their roots and stayed true to what has made them uh, a great band, and... Only within the past couple of albums has it seemed that their sound has become a little bit more uh, similar as it, uh, the albums have passed on, but that's kind of just... It, it happens as you really get up there with the 8, 9, 10, 11 album count. It's it's to the point where differentiation is more so a hardcore fan slash, you know, really keen music observer activity rather than something that is done by each and every individual that listens to the music. So with that said, we kind of know what to expect going in with this album, but... Here's something that I have to really bring up, and that's the fact that this is a European style of metalcore. This is a German band uh, doing metalcore as opposed to an American band that's doing metalcore, which has a very, very different meaning, weirdly enough, in America than it does over in Germany. These guys have done splits with Heaven Shall Burn, who were uh, favorably reviewed last year with their new album uh, from 2013, and here we are in 2014 talking about the other half of the split album with Caliban. First thing I notice about these tracks is that there is definitely a lot more heart, there's a lot more uh, influence, and there's a lot more passion that really bleeds through on these albums, or on these songs rather, on the album, and it's definitely not one that feels as though a lot of this has been uh, synthetically made or, you know, generated as opposed to it being legitimately performed by the uh, uh, by the instrumentalists, it's being genuinely performed by the band. This is something that definitely doesn't need all of those uh, little tricks and traits of the trade uh, in order to really get the sound that they're desiring to uh, be reflected into their music, so that's already a positive. Now, it's not to say that some of those uh, elements are not present in some of these songs, because they are. There are moments where you can hear a little bit of that haphazard clipping uh, that is really prevalent on a lot of American metalcore or a lot of American deathcore, uh, just as a you know little you know flurry thing, a little whatever it might be. Uh, but this is something that's done, done pretty tastefully. It's it's done very sparingly. It's not something that really overburdens the album whatsoever. Uh, there's also a variance whenever it comes to the song lengths on this album. There's uh, tracks that are as short as three minutes, and then there's uh, songs such as Good Man that eclipse the five-minute mark. And once again, it really showcases more of a trademark to a more European-cultured uh, uh, metalcore sound that definitely has some roots uh, we're in to the, uh, the traditional metalcore scene, but since they were around before that even really became huge, in fact, they were one of the forefathers of it, at least on the European side, uh, there's a little bit of an influence of uh, Gothenburg, there's a little bit of an influence of a Germanic or Teutonic thrash in there that all blend together, that create this uh, very dense, this very layered sound uh, that is being employed by them and also being employed by Heaven Child Burn. So there's a lot of parallels here, only I would say that Caliban is a little bit more of a direct metalcore predecessor that has a little bit more of the hardcore influence on it. We will see a couple breakdowns on these songs, uh, and these are things that are pretty traditional, they're pretty cut and dried. It's kind of difficult to really ramp up a breakdown or make a breakdown all of that different. It's a lot to do with pacing, it's got a lot to do with the tone of the song, it's got a lot to do with the message, and a lot to do with the passion uh, and the way in which lyrically and musically a song is progressing. These are done, once again, relatively sparingly. This is not something that is an every song affair. It is not something that they are going back to constantly and feeding from the same well again and again and again. So that is certainly another positive. 
And this is an album that flows a little bit disjointedly, uh, even though these are songs that are very much in a similar vein. You're not getting a lot of this haphazard up and down, up and down stock market style uh, album progression. This is instead one where it just feels as though there are certainly uh, positive tracks on the album, ones that seem to stand out a little bit more, and others that just feel as though they didn't have the same punch, they don't have the same impact. And while you might think that that's something that is illuminatingly obvious on just about every album, this is one where it showcases itself. It becomes very apparent a little bit more so uh, than it does in some of the others that I've perhaps even reviewed just this month. And with that being said, it's certainly one that makes the experience a little bit more of a tedious one. It's one where, uh, even though this album is only about 50 minutes in length, if you remove the bonus track, it, it does start to strain on you a little bit. It does become a little bit more of a uh, problematic idea if you're not necessarily a diehard fan of this style, either that or a fan of this band. So fans of this band will certainly listen to this and just absolutely love what they have done and will really dig what they have done and will be able to get through this album seamlessly considering uh, this is their style. This is a band that is certainly uh, high up in their ranks as their favorites. Uh, however, for the more casual fan, this may come as a bit of a trial. It might become a little bit of an album that needs some some weathering before it really becomes a seamless listen. And that's something that, you know, whenever you're you're looking at it from an objective point of view, it can be very problematic. Uh, a second problem that I certainly have is with the bonus track. Uh, the bonus track features Matt Haffey from uh, Trivium, and you would think that this would have a pretty awesome... Uh, duality to it, but I really feel as this is a uh, a really squandered opportunity. This is kind of just a a really kind of laid back, kind of not what you would expect, and not in a good way. This is something where it almost feels as though they had this tremendous opportunity and didn't have a really strong track in order to have Matt on. Instead, it was one that just sort of was a bare bones idea that was perhaps trying to do a little bit of something different. And the element and the duality, you know, the the addition of him on the song didn't do anything to really shift uh, the feel or the, the the real score or the you know the feeling on the uh, on the track all of that much. So that I feel that that was kind of a a squandered opportunity, uh, a missed opportunity, but it is just a bonus track, so really you can't get too overly critical on a bonus track, considering it is something that is a bonus track for a reason. Uh, overall, this album has a pretty decent flow to it. Like I said, it does have a bit of a disjointed feel at times, and it can get a little bit tedious, but uh, overall, Caliban fans and fans of the metalcore uh, ideal, uh, Heaven Shall Burn fans also will probably dig this album. It's uh, one that is a little bit more traditional in its approach. Uh, I would probably give it a 71 out of 100. Uh, I think that this has a lot of uh, positives to it. There are some blaring negatives that kind of blot out any potential for a higher score than that, but still not bad. Uh, what did you guys think of this album? I, I would really like to know in the comments below. What do you think of Caliban? And what would you like to see me review in the future? Uh, whether it be from the metalcore genre or whether it be from a different genre. Let me know.